right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, how's it going? Good morning. Chris Courtney here, New Pragmatic. It's um, it's a lovely day for the feedback loop. Um, first of all, we got to like stop everything, like shut it down. Congratulations, Kara. If you uh, if you follow along, if you're if you're part of the program, you uh, participate in something called daily stand up, and most of the time in daily stand up, we're dropping we're dropping bits of information, things that happened like the day before, things that are what we're going to try to do today, and if there's any blockers. And um, Kara's been in the program for a few months now, and 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 you know, kind of fighting the good fight uh, every day, doing the day job, and then working. Uh, through the program at night and in the spare time and uh, appreciate everything you bring to the table Kara and then she drops this little nugget in um, let's see here if I can get to it, it says um, I can finally share with the world that I'm pregnant like that's the type of Monday morning daily stand that's the type of thing you drop in on a Monday morning and just like everything just blows up so congratulations Kara um, I really think it's important, and I, I like tweeted this out a little while ago. I said, um, you got to celebrate the happiness that's going on around you. I think that's exactly the type of thing that you need to stop and celebrate, regardless of who's having it, who's having the happiness. If you take part in celebrating, you, um, you get a little bit of re- the restorative value out of that. So, um, we're super happy for Kara. Um, it's an otherwise light morning for uh, the feedback loop because I got to be honest with you, we head into the holidays and people start locking down. So um, this morning we've only got Eve's uh, submission. Now, now Luigi submitted some things over the weekend, um, to, to be completely fair. Uh, Luigi did submit uh, some work over the weekend and, um, you know, let's... Let's we'll we'll take a spin through that as well, but we're gonna we're gonna stay with Eve uh, initially because um, she submitted her work uh, over in the overnight. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen over and let's take a peek at what Eve has for us. So um, that you know she's in the middle of wireframing, and um, I think it's very important to I think it's very important to um, take account in wireframing that there are multiple items that need to be addressed when wireframing one are you are you staying relatively relatively straightforward on the the conversion from sketch to wireframe we don't want to spend a lot of time reinventing the wheel when you when you get in the wireframe that's why you did the sketches the sketches are, are the sketches are really there to keep you accountable and I really believe this is valuable um, that that accountability is valuable to you because um, if if you don't it's way too easy to simply slide off the track and put more and more and more time into in the things that you don't really have time to deal with so um, you know rather than rather than going from these sketches over here to your wireframe and, and kind of reinventing things, I think it's best to say, hey, you know what? I put my effort into the sketches. I've kind of organized my thoughts. Let's translate those into the wireframes and then let's get those into the hands of people, of users, by you know connecting or making our prototype so that we can actually get some feedback on it before we begin reinventing it. So... With that said, um, you know there are a couple things that I would I would say that we would we should do. Like um, I do try to get in the general realm of uh, of size when it comes to my wireframes because a lot of times I'm gonna I'm gonna come right back in and immediately drop um, information right into the background of, of these like uh, photos and uh, typography and like as I begin to elevate the fidelity, because I've got this in Figma, I'm going to I'm going to begin adjusting right here. And I gotta be honest, uh, I don't think that Eve, I, I, oops, I don't think that you'll actually have 144 point, um, you know, logo. Um, 
I, I bet this will be like 80, you know, something along those lines. And then, you know, when you do that and you bring this down and in, I know it feels light, but you're probably going to have like an icon with it or some other information. And I think that also feels a lot closer to this. I'm going to undo it because I want to make sure that you're behind the wheel on that. So adjust that as as uh, as needed. Um, but but I, I would I would just adjust that down. That's that's a very minor thing though. That that is not something that's going to keep this from from getting out to users. Um, as we go through this, uh, you know, you've got your how it works section on the menu. Here are your plans. This is something where you know there's a little bit of interaction here and this is literally the area where I, I really believe that you need a second version of this of this wireframe that that shows us what happens when you toggle like because in the prototype I'm going to potentially toggle between the two of these and I need to see that switch. And the only way to really see that switch is to literally make a copy of this so that that second, that second version of it exists. The question really comes back to, are you gonna be testing for that? Can, you know, because if you said, hey, can you find a plan for, for, a, for a meal that serves four? If, you, if you're gonna test for that, you would want to have a, a, a version of this wireframe available that could toggle. If you're not testing for that, then you don't actually have to have it. Um, it'd be a really nice thing to have, but it, it's, not a it's not a necessity. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to look at your story map. And when we look at this, um, you know, these are the things that you said that you were going to, um, these are the things that you said you were going to, I'm gonna hide the, change, hide the highlighting. These are the things that you said you were going to work through. And you said, okay, so wave one, I'm going to learn about meal subscription plans. And I'm gonna make it available for users to see the options, the delivery pricing and fees, and I'm gonna include an FAQ. Um, this this tells me that they're going to be able to like review the options that are available that applies to this section it also applies over here on your plans page so in both of these in both of these sections i really believe that you're going to have a you're going to have a regular version and a large version and all that really means is that you're going to come over here and you're going to move this over and you're going to copy this over and you'll have a toggle and that toggle it, you'll 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 flip this around to where instead of regular regular being highlighted large will be highlighted um, that's a very minor thing but you can't do the toggle without because uh, at some point um, at some point, if I if I go into prototype mode and I look at how this is constructed, you know, you're you're probably right now. I believe you've yeah, you've got a box here, but you don't have a box there. So you'll probably want to do something similar where you move that over. And if if I click on the large it will move me over to this page, and this page will have the other meal options. Um, it's, not, it's not just that you will, have, you will have the ability to click one or the other, it, it is that this page will have different options on it. Um, so it's not just the movement of the toggle itself, it's also the fact that you'll have other, you'll have other, um, items listed so I'm going to undo all of that so you can come back to it but that's something you have to do when you when you have those when you have the ability to toggle um, I'm looking through here again here are you know meals subs salads this tells me that I will likely have 
three. So I'll have a meals page, I'll have a subs page, I'll have a salads page so that the user could toggle through. But o again, only if, only if I am allowing that to happen. So this is setting up a meal subscription. Um, this is purchasing. So I see, I see selected meals. I see switch to another meal plan. I see select meals wanted. Um, so you're definitely doing the toggle between the size of the meals. Um, I see menu cat. I see this is browse menu. So again, with browse menu, that tells me that I want to have the ability to toggle between these. Um, but otherwise, you know, this doesn't need to change. This information would likely change because you're going to say, hey, can you find a sub sandwich and carry that forward? So, so I feel like you've got, you've got a version A, B here, a version A, B here, a version A, B, C here. And everything that I'm talking about is related to the prototype. We're, we're forward projecting to the prototype. I'm not necessarily seeing anything that's missing from the wireframe itself um, based on the information that we said we were going to include in this version. So obviously we've talked a lot about meal subscription plans. We've, uh, we're looking at the, uh, so we haven't talked about the sign up or cart yet. So let's go ahead and look at that. And if you're following along, know that um, if like if you're watching this, you're like, where the hell is all this information coming from? Um, Eve's gone through about 20 chapters of material, uh, researching her users and um, talking with stakeholders and doing competitive analysis, and that is what has arrived. That's how she arrived at this particular um, list of user stories that she's broken down and kind of broken into discrete tasks. So here we have cart and you're going to sh show images. You're going to update the cart. You're going to allow for the selection of different uh, delivery options, um, contact info, billing info, payment. So here when we look at, okay, so the cart, I do like the fact that you have changed the nav here to reflect that you're not in the state of, you know, I'm not, I'm, I'm no longer just viewing the menu or signing up. I, I'm, I'm in a totally different state. So that has changed. Um, you've, you clearly picked up on the, the need to have that button in the upper, in the upper right. So that, you know, as we're going through and entering things, we have the ability to to um, get out, we, we're not burying this. So convert, you know, you don't lose that person because I can't, oh, you know, the, the pr proceed button isn't clear um, to, to what, what the next step is. Um, so you will need an ABC here. Um, the ABC will be a little shorter because obviously you're not going to get delivery information for curbside pickup. Um, but if I click curbside pickup, what would I see? It would probably be a little different. It would probably be like a selection of which store do I want to, or where do I want to pick it up at? Um, carry out would likely be very similar, except they're not bringing it out to you. Curbside pickup, you're, in, you're basically saying, I'm bringing this out to you. Um, so there would be an ABC there. And here with payment information, um, this is where language becomes more of an issue than anything. So you have review plan and delivery. Um, every time you, you know, you're going to have delivery details that would not be present if I was doing curbside pickup or carry out. So, so know that just like, just as you would have three versions of this page for your prototype, you would also probably have three versions of this page because the language is going to change. Um, but the other thing that I'm, I, I feel like is missing here is, you know, when I hit place order, I'm not seeing any sort of sign of confirmation. Like 
what happens when I hit place order, what happens? And that's something that we, we talk about um, more in depth in the visual, uh, in the interaction design. We talk about feedback and affordance. And um, I understand you're, you're working through the wireframes. But one thing I want to, like, if I, if I could, like, forward project the, the thing that, that people want when they, they click place order, they want some sort of, they want some sort of confirmation that their order has been received. They want to, they want to feel seen. Hey, I asked for something. Did it go through? It, it feels, when, when we click place order and nothing happens, it feels very much like it's, there's a, an uncertainty there that does not feel good. Did the order go through? I don't know. Am I, am I or my family going to eat tonight? Or am I, am I dumb? And I, I entered my information and nobody was actually listening. Um, I've had that. I've had those incidents occur before. Um, uh, case in point, there is a pizza place here in town. And little did I know that there was a difference in their confirmation page. Um, I have received messages that look like a confirmation, but in the fine print, if you read it, it says, uh, it will say something like, uh, we are processing your order. And in other times it would, it will say, we have processed your order. And that difference, we're processing your order and we have processed your order. That that means a lot apparently to their system. So you could show you could ostensibly show up to the restaurant with the confirmation and they'll say to you, Oh, that never went through it. So it says it's processing. Extremely frustrating. Especially when you think that you've waited like forty five minutes for the pizza. And you think you're going to arrive and a pizza is going to be waiting on you. And it's not. And if you know anything about feeding a family or feeding your friends or feeding anybody, um, when you have to bake in 45 minutes of time, you kind of plan out your night around that event. So, so this is where confirmation really plays a huge role. People are planning out their lives around food. That's what we do. And you, you have something related to food. So I think it's very important that you include confirmation here at the end of the cycle. And aside from that, really to prepare prepare yourself for to prepare yourself for the prototype phase, it's just it's it's getting in the mu the multiples so that we understand if I click curbside pickup, I get the options for curbside pickup and you'll need the subsequent steps for that, whatever this information is going to be. The, um, the final note here is whatever, whatever you add to this for the prototype, only add what you plan on testing for. If you're not testing for carry out, don't add it because you won't need that option. Um, if you are testing for carry out, it has to be there because otherwise they can't actually finish the test. They just can't. You didn't give them the option. So that's my two cents there. Th these otherwise, you know, I, I really like I really like lo-fi um, prototypes um, because they they give you an opportunity to test out the flow. Can you know? Can people understand what the hell's going on here? Um, and I, I think by and large they can, I don't think they'll have a problem with it. Um, but you know, you never know until you actually put it in front of somebody and you say, Hey, you know, I'm going to share this link with you up here. You know, I'm going to put it in prototype mode and we're going to go. And right now it's not going to do anything because we don't have it in a prototype mode. It's just like, here, here we are. Um, and this is, this is fine. You know, there's nothing, you know, nothing wrong with this, but what, what really, what we really need to get to is, can we, can we put this in front of somebody and give them and ask them to, to, uh, use the service and have them successfully do it?
So with that, I'm going to, uh, I will leave this to you, Eve. Um, it looks, looks pretty good. You know, a few adjustments necessary, but nothing that, nothing that I don't think you can do. Uh, with that said, let's go over to, let's go back over to Discord and take a peek at the loop. Luigi had submitted some of his wireframes. I want to kind of, want to kind of take a peek. Now I had dropped some guidance. I had dropped some guidance in on Luigi's wireframes, uh, directly in the Figma. One of the things I like about Figma is that you can leave, uh, commentary within Figma and unlike Eve's Luigi had a different dilemma um, popping up and it came back to it really came back to language so so here when we look at Luigi's and you can see Luigi's is a little closer I think to a finalized design in that he's he's you know he's clearly thought out the spacing um, I think the typography is probably closer to the appropriate size. Um, but when you go through here, he's, he, you know, he has this intro and he's like, view menu, you know, hey, why don't you get started and let's view the menu. Um, when you look at easy as one, two, three, it has an order now. And this is where the dilemma occurs. Um, view menu basically would bring you here. Okay, so I'm gonna view the menu. And then there was a problem on this page and we'll talk about that in a moment. But order now, so what happens when you begin an order? You likely go to the menu page. And that's a problem because we're basically pushing the same hook to the user rather than taking this opportunity to tell them how the service works. So, um, so this was an issue that I, that I brought up. Equally, you could say the same thing for, about learn healthy choices, learn more. Now, healthy choices could in fact take you to a, a page focused on how they source their, how they source their, the food that they, that they deliver. Um, but, but these two were really close to one another. The same thing occurred here on the menu page. When I'm on the menu page and the call to action says view menu, that's a huge problem because I, it, it feels like I'm gonna loop back around to this page. Now from this point, after you get past that snafu, like if I click on the salads page, I go to a salads page. If I clicked on bowls, I would probably go to a bowls page. It's a lot like the salads page. So I understood what was going on here. That part made it, made total sense. Same thing with the sign up page, um, sign up, sign in. And Luigi's still working on the rest of his. So in in some ways, uh, I really feel like Luigi's closer in terms of like overall design, but the me the messaging, the hooking through from one page to the next, that was a bit off. And then um, and then like you know this call to action might not need to, might need to be removed altogether. So um, so that's that's kind of where Luigi's at right now. But as you can see, like these projects do not look alike at all. Everybody's everybody based on the research that they're they're performing is coming up with a different solution for a similar problem. And that's why you have competitors in the marketplace. Otherwise you wouldn't have those competitors in the marketplace ever working against one another. So I'm trying to find my way back to not ScreenFlow but OBS. Um, so with that, hey, great work, Luigi. Great work, Eve. Everybody's progressing through. Congratulations, Kara. Super excited for you. And um, I can't wait to see Melanie and Tedril and Shane. And you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of portfolios I need to need to be seen in the feedback loop. So hopefully we will get a few cycles through before we end up for the holiday break. The holiday break starts on Monday. That's a week from today. And then we'll be off through um, through the 29th, I believe. I'll have to check on that. But otherwise, um, keep on keep an eye out. The 
sale begins on the 26th. So I hope to um, hope to see all of you jumping in on the the new offering. Um, the visual design course is forthcoming, and I am super excited for all the changes that we are about to unleash. So without further ado, I'm gonna go get started. Action! I get started. I'm gonna go continue my work there. Uh, I'm Chris Courtney. This has been the feedback loop, and I will chat with all of you later. Take care.